everybody, welcome to Harmon Garage. I'm Aaron, and uh, another day in the shop. Uh, I spent the morning painting the frame on uh, cherry pie, at least where I couldn't get to with the motor in it. I still got some other spots I gotta touch up, and I'm gonna do the outside when I have the wheels off and everything, doing suspension work. But it turned out pretty good, I think. If you hear that buzzing in the background, it's extremely monotonous and annoying. I've got to run a couple heaters because it's cold for Alabama. Shop's not insulated. And uh, I shot my laser temp gun. I think it was about 47, 48 degrees in here a little bit ago. So not ideal conditions for paint to dry, but I got two space heaters pointed straight at it. Hopefully that'll do it some work and it'll dry fairly quick, but here it is. Got top of the frame painted, bottom of the frame painted, inside the C-channel painted, engine cross members painted, steering shafts painted. Everything that I can't get to with the engine in got painted. And, uh, this paint that I used is like a rust inhibitor. I, I don't know. It's flat black. It takes a couple days to cure in good weather. So I wanted to get it on there, get it painted. And today is Wednesday. I'm going to let it sit for the rest of the week. Um, we're leaving Friday afternoon to go on a short family vacation. So for the rest of this week, I'm going to play with the burnout truck. So I'm waiting. I don't have the means to get some of the parts that I need for the motor right now. I need valve springs, retainers, locks, lifters, push rods. Yeah, I don't have that stuff right now. I can't get it right now. So I'm gonna kind of hold off on that, but I still want to move forward and uh, that's what we're gonna do today. So I wanna start prepping the truck for the roll cage. Not saying I'm gonna put the whole cage in right now, but I wanna start prepping everything, getting the dash cut out, getting doors put on it, um, getting the cage mocked up in there. I will tack weld it, but I'm not gonna final weld anything. I may, depending on how much time we have, I may pull this motor and trans out because I just can't leave it looking like that. Even though it's a burnout truck and it's most likely going to blow up, I just can't leave it looking like that. And I'm going to fill in all these holes on the firewall. Every hole is going to get filled in except for where the brake booster goes everything else all these up on top filled in heater box filled in heater core hoses filled in everything except where the brake master cylinder goes getting filled um yeah so after i pressure washed it really good and left it sitting outside it all got full of leaves again so i'm gonna grab the shop vac Vacuum it out again, so we're starting with a pretty clean slate. I'm gonna go grab the doors. You might ask why I'm putting the doors on if I'm gonna be working inside. I need the doors in and able to close to for the door bars on the cage. I'm a little bit of a bigger guy. Sometimes when you run them straight bars down from the B-hoop right next to you, they're kind of encroaching on you. So I don't know if I'm gonna need to or not, but I might kind of put a little swoop in them so they give me a little bit more room, at least on the driver's side. Passenger side, I'm not too worried about. But I'm gonna vacuum that out. I'm gonna go get the doors taken off of the other truck brought in here, and then we'll get started. All right, well, we got her all vacuumed out. As good as it's gonna get for now. And I went outside and got the doors off of the parts truck and man, my shop is getting cluttered, turned into a real mess. And uh, after this video, I'm taking a day off. First day I get back from vacation and cleaning this thing up. I can't stand it. 
but uh i was gonna take you guys outside with me to get the doors but it's pretty dang cold out there and i figured you're probably much more comfortable where you're at right now so i didn't want to take you out there with me and have everybody get cold i got the doors in we're gonna do some stuff with them here in a little bit first things first i'm gonna get that dash out of there all right first things first They've got four screws, two on each side, that hold them to the side of the cab. We'll get those out real quick. Honestly, I don't understand why they got the screws because, like I mentioned in the last video, if I don't fall on my face here, these things are uh, spot welded to this pinch seam up here. So you can take the screws out all day long and it ain't going to do nothing. here and cut this if you guys can see that uh, yeah you can see me okay we got to cut this all the way across here I don't want to drill the spot welds out and take it off because that's going to take away the thickness of the channel where the windshield seal rides so I want to leave that there so I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it back it's close up there as I can get it then we'll come back with a little grinder or something and smooth it out so it's not sharp. But there's a couple bolts in here I gotta take out. There's one here. A couple over here. No big deal. The right tool for this, in my opinion, would be a cutoff wheel. Just come in here, walk it down along the edge, get it all cleaned out. But I don't feel like getting sparks thrown on me today, and I don't feel like throwing sparks all over everything else in here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the Sawzall, and we'll zip that off. All right. All right, I just got some 80 grit on my little, I 
call it a wizard wheel. I'm just going to come in here and clean all this up and uh, make it pretty. Alright, as you saw I got that cut out. And for all the purists out there that are crying right now because I cut a dash out of a good cab, a dash was hacked up bad. Like, they cut a hole in it for the crookedest, most out of rectangle, funky stereo I've ever seen. Like, I don't know what the heck they had in there. But, could have been fixed, still could be fixed. It's a good dash other than that, and it could be tacked back in to another truck. So I'll hold on to it for a little while because I'm a hoarder and I hold on to everything. But uh, if it comes scrap day and I don't have a use for it, it's probably going to go. Um, I got this insulation that's got to get pulled out. I got to take the throttle pedal and stuff loose to get to it. We'll get it the rest of the way out. This brace for the dash has a bolt from the engine compartment. We'll get it pulled out. I'm going to get these vents here pulled out on both sides uh parking brake pedal we ain't gonna need that where we're going um so yeah i just got some uh a little bit more stripping to do and then we'll be done and i still need i need to clean this edge up i don't want to leave it all rough and sharp not that it'll matter but i don't want to so i'll clean that up a little bit and uh Get the rest of this junk out of here, and then we'll start working on the doors. Hang tight. Got everything else that I wasn't gonna need stripped out. And you saw in the time lapse that I cut that lip back and then ground it down. It was kind of unnecessary, but at the same time, I wanted to do it because for one thing, I'll show you here in a second, but it looks a lot cleaner. And two, having that edge sticking out a little bit, even if I, uh, would have just finished grinding it down it still would have been sharp and i'm going to be crawling all over in here doing wiring and cages and everything else and i just didn't want to leave the chance of it cutting me or somebody else there so i'll show it to you i got it cut back it's behind this main portion of the cab now so you couldn't touch the edge of it. I mean, I can stick my finger in there and touch it, but I got it ground back. You're not gonna accidentally cut yourself on it. There's like no way, no way possible. I can't even get the lip of it. So once the windshield's in, that'll mainly be covered by the seal. You'll never even see it. Insulation's out, kick vents are out, uh, hood release, parking brake that support rod there in the center all that stuff is gone um, I got a mess to clean up in here again all this dust from cutting and everything and pieces I cut off and other crap that fell out when I took stuff apart so I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then I'm gonna call it a day starting to get kind of late sun's going down and it's getting cold in here and when it comes to the cold I'm not your guy. So I grew up in the cold. I moved to where it was hot and my body got used to the hot and now I don't do the cold anymore. So it was pretty warm in here when I had the heaters going, but it's hard to film with the heaters going because they're loud. And it's four o'clock anyways. I've been here most of the day painting and doing what I was doing. So I'll be back with you guys in the morning 
we're gonna get started on those doors i'll show you what i'm doing to them we'll get them hung and then we can start mocking this roll cage up in there okay it's the next day not gonna say it's morning because it's not woke up normal time let my dogs outside looked at the weather saw that it was 38 degrees and said nope went back in the house watched some tv played around with my daughter and uh it got up to about 45 and I said, okay, I might be able to deal with that, which I was lying to myself. I, I can't, but I'm going to, I want to get this knocked out. We're leaving for vacation tomorrow and I want to get this video up for you guys before I leave. So, um, I told you we were going to start working on the doors today. I got in here and got all the shrapnel from cutting that off out, vacuumed it back up. And we got our doors sitting right here so these were power doors and i don't know if you guys have experienced it or not before but if you take a complete door off a power truck versus a complete door off a manual truck the power doors weigh an excessive amount more i've never actually weighed them so i don't know what the weight difference is but the power doors are quite a bit heavier now I told you I don't want to go get carbon fiber or fiberglass panels or doors or any of that but I'm trying to take as much weight off of this truck as I can and just see how light we can get it so I'm gonna completely strip these doors everything's coming off of them mirrors door handles locks everything the only thing I'm leaving on for now and I don't even know if it's going to stay is the latch and then I'm going to once I get the windows and the motors and all that stuff out let me, let me reset some of this stuff so I can show you guys better what I'm talking about without everything being in the way so hang on just a second okay so what I'm going to do is I don't know this 100% for sure, but in my opinion, the structural part of the door is right here and right here and right here and right here. I know this all ties into it too, but what I want to do or what I'm going to do, and it may not be a good idea. It might be a great idea, but I'm going to come about where this line, where the door panel used to sit was across here all the way across all the way to where the door panel sat on this side and all the way down I'm gonna leave about a half an inch on the outside and I'm going to cut all that out because I don't need it. I'm going to build a new style door handle that I'll show you guys here once we get a little further along. So I'm not going to need the center of the door for the door handle or any of that stuff. So because it'll be a lot easier, I'm going to cut that part of the door out. And then just reach in there and pull the regulator and everything out. And I won't have to mess with getting the window off the regulator and snicking the regulator out the hole and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to decide exactly where I want to cut it. I'm going to get a straight edge of some kind over here and mark exactly where I want to cut it. And then we're going to pull out the death wheel and hope we don't die. Okay, so first things first. I'm going to unbolt everything that's on the part of the door that I want to cut off. Just so when I try to take the panel out, I'm not pulling a bunch of crap with me. Now I know in some people's eyes butchering up these doors 
but that's okay because uh, I'm doing what I need to do with them. So, and the, the driver side door is actually pretty decent. The passenger side door's got some serious dents in it, and uh, I want to try to make this truck look as good as I can. And we're probably, well, we're definitely going to paint it. So I'll probably have to do a bunch of body work on that door anyways, but these aren't perfect doors by any means. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this before, but like the 82 to 85 ish doors, they use thinner metal or something but they're half the door that the other ones are they they don't uh they don't they're real tin, tin canny i guess is what i'm trying to say but that's okay because that means they're lighter and that's what we're looking for so. I'm saving the glass, I'm saving the regulators because they're good. Saving the door handles, the mirrors, everything. We may use them for a future project, we just don't need them for this one. So, seems like I got everything pretty well unbolted. Probably get this wiring harness out of here. And then uh, I'll make my final mark and We'll start cutting. All right, so I got my straight edge here and a brand new fresh Sharpie. It's impressive, I know. So what I'm gonna do is I decided to come down a little bit lower because I wanna keep this rolled lip on here to add a little bit of strength. So we're going to Mark this here. And then I told you guys I was going to change up the door handle configuration. And in order to do that, I'm going to need this part right here. So we're going to drop down here. Cut this right along that. Alright, I don't know if the brand new Sharpie was a good idea because it's not doing a very good job of marking. We'll go back to one of the old wore out sloppy ones. They usually feel a little better anyways. Alrighty, so then I'm going to kind of Move up here. Make a mark there. I got my mark here. So we'll just kind of I'll kind of draw this line with the saw, but it's going to be angled there. in the door so I'm just gonna try to kind of freehand this we'll get it as straight as we can
All right, didn't turn out too bad. I know I said I was going to use the desk wheel to cut this, and I still might, but since I got the curves on the bottom and stuff, I'm going to pull out my little air powered body saw and uh, see how it does. It hasn't impressed me in the past, so if it's kind of being a hunk of crap today like it usually is, then we'll pull out the desk wheel and get this thing cut. But if it works, I think I can get a lot better cut with it. So let me grab it, get some air going over here, and uh, try to get this thing cut. All right, let's see if she wants to play nice today. try drilling those spot welds because that seems like the smarter thing to do I guess and uh, yeah we'll drill those out and get this panel off and then we'll see what's going on after that all right I'm going to go and uh, get out my hillbilly spot weld cutter. We'll cut down along this and then once we get this panel out of the way we'll be able to get in there and do something with that brace. I kind of need to leave that brace there because that's where the nuts, where the door bolts on are. For now I want to leave that intact, at least the backing on the door. We may have to brace this door up a little bit once I get it all done, but I won't know until I get it all done. So 
I'm going to um, pull out the air chisel, try to blast through all them spot welds and get the center panel out of our way. Okay, definitely a lot faster than drilling, and uh, I don't really care if I mangle it up because I'm not going to use it anyways. So. There's our uh, no longer needed panel. Look how easy it is to get all this stuff out of this door now. Need to get the window regulator out. Oh, there it is. Window out. Boom, there it is. Ta-da! All done. Now I just need to come back and uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to leave that in there. I might tack weld it back to this. But that's going to add a lot of strength where it mounts. So I'm probably going to leave that there. It's a lot easier to clean the bottom of the doors out too. So, all right, that's that. That's pretty much the idea. We're going to, uh, like I said, we're going to leave the latch in, but I'm going to take the window tracks out. I'm going to take the lock mechanisms out, the actuators. And uh, I'll finish stripping the outside of the door, and then we're going to start making our new door uh, handle opener. So I'll go ahead and finish stripping this thing down, and then I'll bring you guys back and show you what we're doing. Okay, like I said, I'm going to be making a new door release, or door handle, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put it right here. And this is still pretty stout, and when I tack weld this back on here, that will uh, stiffen it up even a little bit more. But I went ahead and made some little brackets. And I'm going to put one right here. Like so. And then I've got another one to go right there. And once I get these welded in, that should help stiffen this up quite a bit I only need it stiffened right here other than that I don't really care how flimsy it is it can do whatever it wants but if I put a bracket right here and a bracket right here should stiffen that door up and give me what I need and uh, we'll be in good shape so I got my little 110 welder over here that's all we should need for this thin metal on this door and my big welder isn't playing nice with me right now so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the metal, get the paint cleaned off and get these braces tacked in. And after I get them tacked in and get this over here tacked back up, we'll uh, show you where we're at. Okay, I got my braces all welded in there. It's been a little while. I've been figuring some things out, but they're all welded in. It's stiffened that door up a lot. I got this welded back to the inner piece. Uh, and that stiffen that up a lot now what I'm gonna do here is we still have our latch mechanism in here and I didn't show you guys but I cut a big chunk off of it right here and there was this big old piece in there like so went over hooked into here yada 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 and that is the locking mechanism. I completely disabled the locking mechanism. It can't do anything now, so the door will never lock. That's what I wanted because I'm not gonna put a lock on there. And I didn't want that to get bumped or something and go in the lock position. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna plate this 
with like aluminum or something yet and if i do there won't be any way to get down in there so i completely disabled the lock system it's going to be a burnout truck and a race car and i don't need the doors to lock it's going to be in my shop or in a trailer or i'm going to be with it or whatever i'm not really too worried about locking the doors so with that being said i'm doing this with stuff that i have laying around because i don't feel like going anywhere and buying anything so i found this rod have no idea what it went to or why i had it came out of something but i've got enough of it to do both doors so what we're going to do is you can see where the latch release for the inside used to be we're going to hook that on there we're going to bring our rod up here we're going to put a hole through here for to make a pivot and then i just kind of roughly drew up a little handle here and that's going to be i'm going to sorry i'm trying to do this i'm going to cut a slot through this part of the door right here this handle that i've got drawn out on this piece of metal is going to come up through that slot like so and then you're going to be able to push that back and it's going to release the door now you may want to know why i'm putting it up there what's the purpose yada 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 if you're familiar with race cars you already know i'm not going to leave this with no windows i'm going to come through here eventually and put little tabs all the way around the outside and i'm going to put some kind of lexan or plexiglass or something in there to make a permanent window and when i do that i'll cut a hole in it right here and you'll be able to reach through from the outside move our little lever open the door from the outside and if you're on the inside you just pop the little lever open the door so that's my plan I should be making this out of aluminum since we're trying to save weight, but I guarantee you this little piece of steel, by the time I drill a bunch of speed holes and everything in it, isn't going to weigh as much as all the stuff that I took out, so or even close. So we're still in good shape. I'm going to go over on the bandsaw and trim this out the best that I can, and we'll probably have to do some grinding on it and everything else to get it the shape that I want but i'm gonna go ahead and cut it out and then i'll show it to you guys and then we'll start working on our pivot here and how we're gonna attach it so stay tuned okay well i thought about filming making the handle and uh i'm gonna say you guys should be glad i didn't because it took me way longer than it should have but i'm extremely happy with the results and there it is got a couple speed holes in it got my pivot hole in it got my hole to hook my rod up to it so just so you guys don't think i'm totally stupid even though i am there's a pedal right there that controls my bandsaw and i step on that sucker all the time but anyways we went from this to this i got a little factory locking clip to go in there to hold my rod so i'm going to uh trace this out onto this piece of metal so i'm closer in size for the next one and uh yeah then we'll go ahead and start putting this door together okay so i got a hole drilled in my door right here which is going to be my pivot point and then I drew some lines here for a cutout for the door I don't want this on the inside of the door like so don't really have a reason but I don't want it I want it on the inside sticking up through I drew some lines here for a cutout so it may be kind of hard for you guys to tell, but this biggest hole right here is going to be my pivot point. So that's going to sit on there and kind of lean forward. And then you're going to pull the door handle back 
and that's going to open your door. So I've never done this before. I've seen it on race cars and on TV or whatever and I've never seen exactly how they do it but I just came up with this idea in my head and I mean I think it's going to work. Worst case I might have to put some kind of spring on my handle to hold it to pull it back forward after you open the door but honestly you got it there you close the door you push it forward it should stay shut but um, this slot may be n bigger than I need it to be but I'd rather have too much room rather than not enough so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out I got a little I got a bolt that I'm gonna put through here <coughs> excuse me got a bolt to put through here to use as my pivot point and it happens to be a carriage bolt I'm gonna teach you guys a little trick to use a round drill I'll be able to make that so that that carriage the square lock-in part goes in there you may have seen it before you may already know how to do it you may think it's the coolest thing you've ever seen but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and uh, then we'll start putting it together Alright, my glove doesn't catch on anything, so I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, it's fine. Now I can kind of show you a little bit more. I also got this um, factory clip. It's off of the original uh, door lock actuator, but it's the same size that I need for the rod that I'm using. So I kind of shaved that down thinner so this would clip in there like it's supposed to. We'll have that go up through there. It's going to be in a little ways, but that's going to be our pivot. It'll sit like that. Reach through. Dunk. Open the door. So I'm going to go get a tool, and I'll show you guys how to make that circle a square so we can put our carriage bolt in there, and uh, it'll lock in. Okay, somebody showed me this a long time ago. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you guys because it's pretty useful if you ever need it. I got a triangle file and we got our circle holder. So what I'm gonna do just go like that. Just turn our circle into a square. Got to go a little bit bigger. Believe it or not, this actually works better on thicker metal because you can get a good grind with the file. This is kind of, I don't know, it doesn't seem to be going as easy as the thicker metal does. But. Alright, 
and just like that we got our carriage bolt sitting in there it won't spin so I'm going to clean this metal up here actually not quite yet I'm going to put a washer on the back side of this and then nut it and then I'm going to slide my lever on there and then we'll put another washer and another nut and uh, the outside nut will be a lock nut and then it'll lock on there and it should be fine and then it'll be able to pivot off of this bolt so it's not going to be daily driven it's not going to be used all the time so I'm not too worried about you know that's that's a pretty snug fit on that bolt it doesn't have any playroom, so it's got quite a bit of room that it can wear on both before it would ever cause an issue. And worst case, it causes an issue, put a new bolt in it. So, I am going to weld the bolt to the door, just to make sure it stays there. But I'm going to get the rest of the stuff together, and I think I'm going to clean this. Uh, nah, that's good enough. I'm going to get the rest of the stuff together, and uh, we'll start throwing this on here. Okay. Trying to get you guys as close as I can so you can see without being too close. So I'm going to take my carriage bolt, stick it in there, and then I got just a regular nut. I'm going to screw it on the back, which I know it's not going to be tight because there's not enough thickness of metal there. And then on there put my handle in and that one nut's going to space it out perfectly it's right in the middle of my cutout put another washer on there and then I'm going to put a lock nut on there and I'm going to leave my lock nut with a little bit of play in it I don't want it to be tight against there because uh, if it's tight against there, then this is going to be hard to move, and I don't want it to be really hard to move. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off some of this paint, which I should have done before I put the bolt in. But sometimes I don't think all that true. Uh, I'm going to clean, clean the paint off around here, at least on two sides or something. Scuff the bolt up a little bit. I'm going to grab the welder, and I'm going to weld this in place, and then I can take a wrench and snug up my bolt there and then all we got left to do is make our rod that goes in here and we should have a working door and with a working door we can go hang it on the truck and try it out okay I got it all mounted up there I got my rod put in with the clips and works like I wanted it to so I'm going to go ahead and go hang this door and I didn't put a lot of thought into it but I did the driver's door first and the driver's door is over against the wall with a bunch of crap piled around it so I can't really get over there with a camera to video it so I'm going to hang this door to get it out of my way and then I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other door and then I'll uh, show you guys putting that door on and uh That'll kind of finalize this little project, but I'm going to just build that door out as quick as I can. And then we'll film hanging it, testing it, and uh, yeah, it should be good to go. Okay, second door is all done. It's past dark 30. My wife's upset with me for working so late, but I've got stuff I got to get do to get ready for the trip tomorrow. And... Uh, I don't know how much shop time I'm going to have, so I didn't want to rush through anything to finish a video or anything like that. So, I know you can buy, I don't know, I'm sure you can buy kits to do this 
latch style door opener thingy whatever it is that i just did i'm sure you can because i've seen them on tons of race cars but i don't like to buy stuff i built this whole kit with stuff i had laying around the shop just scrap garbage whatever and uh i already hung the driver door and tested it out and it worked great and now i've got the passenger side door done and uh you guys can watch me hang it and then we'll test it out and see how it works and uh pretty cool lightweight race car doors for zero dollars um i wish i had a scale so that i could weigh what the doors weighed before versus what they weigh now because when i carried them in from outside with all that crap in them i dang near had to set them down and take a break halfway in and when i went and hung that door on the driver's side i could take one hand and press it whatever i don't know i don't exercise anyways it's light so i'm gonna go ahead and get this door hung on the passenger side we'll try it out see how it works and uh, then we'll go on from there these doors are super light like insanely light compared to what they were so i'm pretty excited about that and the other thing is if you look at the bottom of this door it's pretty well beat but considering i can get to the back side of it with no problems pretty sure body work's gonna be a piece of cake on this one I'm not perfectly aligning these or anything because I know at some point in this build they're going to have to come back off. But I want them on for right now. And uh, I want to test out the latches and make sure they work right and all that stuff. So. try to do when I hang any door unless the truck got painted you can usually see where the washers from the bolts were on the hinges and I just try to get them as close to that as possible and that's usually if nothing else a good starting point so I'm gonna go ahead and Snug this thing down. Alright, once you get it close to where you want it, I go ahead and tighten a couple of them up and the other ones will just be where they are. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this thing down and then we'll see how she does. While I'm here and the door's secure, I'm going to try to do a little bit of body work. Hey. I'm definitely going to have to hammer and dolly it. It's oil cannon really bad, but that's better than it was so I'm gonna go grab the other camera that I can hold and uh, show you guys how this thing does all right I literally just went and grabbed the other camera I haven't even tried closing this door yet so uh, you guys are gonna do it with me let's see how it goes it doesn't have weather stripping in there and these doors didn't come off this truck so they're probably going to need some alignment but honestly yeah back gaps a little tight 
at the top, but we can fix that. Anyways, here's our little door pull. Doors shut and secure. Pull it back, open the door. Close is good enough. And there it is. So I'm super happy with it. I tried to make the uh, little pulls identical, but I was using a little grinder, sanding them down, shaping them, and tried to make them look the same. And they're close. I mean, they you can tell I made both of them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I think it turned out pretty good. They're super light. One of the benefits to uh, these doors is you don't ever have to worry about the door, the weight of the door, wearing out the door pins because it's just not gonna happen. They weigh nothing. So, looks good, looks like a factory door on both sides. Everything that I did, welding wise and all that stuff, that'll all clean up pretty good. And uh, like I said, I may like hang a sheet of aluminum or fiberglass or something light I doubt it but uh least at least I'll probably grab some of that like rubber door edging and put it along where I cut just because it won't weigh that much and uh it'll won't be as sharp but we're making progress doors are done dash is out I'm ready to start putting the cage in this thing. So that's a huge step in this project. I mean, putting the cage in, getting it all right, and finishing up the motor and getting it all right. That's some of the, that's two of the biggest parts of this project. So we're getting there. I still gotta fill the holes in the firewall and stuff. I was gonna try to get to that this video, but those doors took a while and uh, I don't want to make a two hour video, so we'll get to those next time or we'll start putting the cage in and I can fill those holes later. Um, it's going to be a lot more stuff I'm going to do this truck. If you're not subscribed, you definitely want to do that because you don't want to miss out. I'm thinking about switching to a rack and pinion steering and I'm probably going to have to make a whole bunch of stuff for that because I'm not going to go buy one of those three to five thousand dollar kits to put rack and pinion steering on this thing. I'll make it all myself. I got a pretty good idea in my head of how to do it. And if we do that, we should be able to lop the frame rails off about right here on both sides, right in, right in front of that cross member. And uh, that'll take off a lot of weight. And then if we do that, we won't be able to put the core support back on. So we'll just have to make some race car stuff to hang the fenders from which that core support weighs a lot too and uh we may do some trimming on the fenders like we did on the doors there's a lot of ways to drop weight off this old girl i wish i had a scale or scales so i could have weighed it before but i'm not so concerned with weighing it before because i can go online and get the curb weight of the vehicle when it was made and that's what it that's what it's going to be and uh then we'll figure out a way to get this thing weighed when I'm all done. See how much weight we took off of it. Even if I got to take it down to the truck stop and roll it across the scale. I don't care. I'll do it. So, uh, but anyways, I'm having a ton of fun. I hope you guys are enjoy watching it. Thank you for watching. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. Y'all have a good one. See you next time.